join me as we explore concepts with regards to energy transfers through an ecosystem. This is covered by Quarter 4, Module 5B of Science A. So are you ready? For today's video, we have the following most essential learning competency, which is to describe the transfer of energy through the tropic levels. Specifically, we have the following objectives. Yung una, we are going to explain yung connections within a food chain as well as how producers and consumers interact for energy flow through an ecosystem. Uh, we are also going to explore ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng food chain sa food web. And for number three, we are going to discuss yung importance ng producers, consumers, and decomposers in an ecosystem and also identify the consequences of their absence in energy flow. And lastly, we are going to explain how the transfer of energy is through the tropic levels. So to start with, let us define first what is ecosystem. Do you know ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng ecosystem? Now from your previous years, from your previous topics, you already know that pag sinabing ecosystem, ito ay binubuo ng mga organisms in a community plus the abiotic factors. So, ecosystems are transformers of energy and processors of matter. And ecosystems are self-sustaining. So, ano nga ba yung uh, needed para maging self-sustaining yung ecosystem? Of course, the ecosystem needs to capture energy. There is also the transfer of energy. And lastly, the cycle of nutrients through the components of the ecosystem. Important thing that you should remember about the ecosystem is that it includes both living or yung biotic factor at saka yung non-living or the abiotic factor. So when we talk about biotic factors, this includes all the living organisms yung sa Six Kingdom classification which includes the archaea, bacteria, fungi, plants, protists, and animals. On the other hand naman, pag sinabi namang abiotic factor, so this includes the air, temperature, light, minerals, the pH, humidity, water, and the soil. So, these two mix up now the ecosystem. So, remember that when we talk about biotic factors, so this includes the living things such as plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, because as you all know, bio means life. So, if something has life, then it is living. So, as uh, based on the given example, the plants here and of course the organisms living in these mang mangroves are called the biotic factors. On the other hand, when we talk about abiotic factors, this refers to non-living things such as moisture, temperature, the wind, sunlight, soil, rocks. So, meaning ng abiotic, kung kanina yung bio means life. So, yung A refers to without and Bio means life, so without life. So if something is uh, does not uh, have life or is not living, then it is an abiotic factor. So the balance of these factors determine what can live in a particular environment. Now you already know that the primary source of energy is the sun. So from the sun, there is a constant input of energy and energy flows through the different ecosystems and the nutrients are being cycled and remember that there is the law of physics wherein matter cannot be created or destroyed so nutrients can only cycle so inputs here are energy and nutrients and energy flows through the different ecosystems okay this time let us explore how energy flows through the ecosystem as we all know that the primary source of energy is the sun. So the energy from the sun is captured by the, of course, the producers, uh, specifically the plants. Then the producers is eaten by the primary consumers known as herbivores. And the uh, primary consumers are being uh, consumed by the secondary consumers known as the carnivores. So take note that for every level, there is a loss of energy. So, ibig sabihin yung output dito is hindi uh, equal dun sa kanilang mga inputs. Now, let's proceed to the feeding types. Uh, different types of animals can be grouped in several ways. So, one grouping system is based on how animals feed. 
Now, as we already know, that yung mga organisms na kaya makapaggawa ng sarili nilang pagkain, usually the plants, are known as producers. So, plants produce their own food using the light energy from the sun through the process of photosynthesis. Now, aside sa plants, meron din tayong mga producers where are some types of bacteria using the light or chemical reactions. Now, yung mga organisms naman na walang kakayahang gumawa ng sarili nilang pagkain, wherein they need to consume other organisms, are called consumers. From the group of consumers, they can be grouped into different types. Yung una, yung mga consumers that consumes or eat producers are known as herbivores. Yung ikalawa naman, yung mga consumers naman that eats other organism are known as carnivores. Now, yung mga consumers naman that eat both plants and animals are known as omnivores. So, examples dito are us, humans. So, are you familiar with a food chain? So, yung food chain actually class, it's uh, quite easy kasi pinapakita lang dito kung ano yung kinakain ng isang organism. So, what eats what? So, what is the food chain in this habitat? Can you give an example? So, a food chain shows what is eaten by what. So, each arrow means eaten by. So, ibig sabihin, when you see this arrow, uh, yung ibig sabihin niyan is eaten by or kinakain niya. So, let us uh, interpret this food chain. So, what does this food chain show? So, ibig sabihin nito, the leaf is eaten by a caterpillar. Tapos yung caterpillar naman is eaten by the bird. Wherein, in turn, ito naman yung bird is eaten by a cat. So, as you can see, energy is transferred from one organism to another in the direction of the arrow. So, sumusunod siya dun sa principle na energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can be only be transformed from one form to the other. A food chain also can show a ranking of consumers. So, yung consumers eat plants or animals or both, and a food chain can be used to rank different types of consumers. So, for example, uh, you have the seaweed is eaten by snails and snails is eaten by crayfish or shrimps. And of course, yung crayfish is eaten by humans. So, yung una, of course, that would be the producer. Yung kumain doon sa producer is known as the primary consumer. And yung primary consumer naman, after being consumed by the crayfish, so yung crayfish naman ngayon, these are the secondary consumer. And yung last, yung kumakain dito sa tertiary, uh, I mean sa secondary consumer is known as the tertiary consumer. Usually, yung nasa tertiary consumer are the top predators. Okay, so now we're given example kanina. So, yung food chain shows the trophic level. So, ibig sabihin yung feeding relationship. So, we already know that lahat ng energy in on Earth start with the energy from the sun. And the energy from the sun is captured by plants. So, this is the first level of all the food chains, which is known as the producers. So, food chains usually uh, go only up to 4 or 5. And as you can see, there is an inefficiency of energy transfer. So, yung kumain kanina sa producers, these are known as primary consumer, uh, known as herbivores, and secondary consumers, known as carnivores, and the tertiary consumers, which is the top carnivore. Okay, so all of this, from producers down to the tertiary consumers, connects to decomposers. Of course, if all organisms die, they all go back or being consumed by the deconsumers. Uh, I mean, decomposers. So, these are also known as the autotrophs kasi kaya nilang gumawa ng sarilang pagkain. And based sa ating discussion last time, yung mga organism na one, naman na uh, uh, needs other organism to have their energy, they are known as the heterotrophs. So, you might be wondering, Bakit nga ba there is inefficiency of energy transfer? Bakit hindi lahat ng energy coming from the sun is na-absorb ng organisms from producers to consumer? So, there is because there is a loss of energy between levels of food chain. So, saan ba napupunta itong mga nawawalang energy? So, yung energy coming from the sun is, as we all know, absorbed by the uh, 
producers from the plants pero hindi lahat ng energy na naabsorb nito mga producers is kayang maipasa dito sa uh, primary consumer. So saan nga ba napupunta yung ibang energy? So yung 50% nito napunta lang sa waste or feces. Yung iba naman through 33% cellular respiration. Okay? And 70% nito is used for growth. So, only this energy moves on to the next level in the food chain. For example, pag ito kinain ng another organism, ito lang yung ma-absorb na energy ng secondary consumer. So, to where is the energy lost? It is uh, consumed or being used for the cost of living. So, let's take a closer look on how energy is uh, transferred through the use of ecological pyramid. So, yung loss of energy between levels of food chain. So, can uh, feed fewer animals in each level. So, as we all know that the primary source of energy is uh, from the sun. And, for example, uh, 1 million joules of sunlight is being absorbed by the primary producers. Now, only 100,000 from this will be given to the primary consumer. And only 100 from the primary consumer is being absorbed by the secondary uh, consumers. And from the secondary consumers, only one joule is being consumed by the tertiary consumer. So, ibig sabihin, this is the reason why para masatisfy yung energy consumption ito, the uh, tertiary consumer needs to consume more of the secondary consumer. In turn naman, itong secondary consumers needs to eat more of the primary consumers in order for it to have or to get the needed energy. Kasi nga, saan napunta yung mga energy? Of course, for the cost of living. Yung iba, turn into waste. Yung iba naman, through heat loss and others. Now, let us explore how humans in food chains. So, dynamics of energy through ecosystems have important impl uh, implications for human populations. So, how much energy does it take to feed a human? So, if we are meat eaters, kung magpapansin ninyo, do we consume less organisms or do we consume more? So, as you can see, we need, it needs a lot of energy kasi itong mga cows, in order for it to support yung dami nila, yung, uh, yung kanilang processes, so it needs more uh, producers, so, of course, para makonsume naman ito ng mga humans. Unlike if we are vegetarian, so direct ka kukuha dito ng energy from the uh, producers. Realistically, as we all know, hindi lang naman iisang type ng organism yung kinakain ng mga consumers. So instead, they usually eat many different things and are involved in lots of different food chains. So, such as this one. Let us take this uh, food chains as an example. So, yung plants, aphid, ladybird, blue tit, and of course, yung ating uh, uh, apex predator dito is yung owl. Okay. So, pag pinagsama-sama lahat ng mga food chains na to, then you are going to create a food web wherein it shows how the food chains are connected. So, what would be the food web would look like for this food chain. So, let us take a look. This time, let us put all the food chains together para makagawa tayo ng food web. So, ano nga ba yung magiging itsura ng food web? Of course, it all starts with a producer which is usually plants. So, yung plants is eaten by aphids. Aphids is eaten by the ladybird. And the ladybird is eaten by the blue tit which is a kind of bird. And next, food chain Yung plant is eaten by the moth larva, yung blue tit, and this type of bird is eaten by the owl. And another food chain, yung uh, plant is eaten by the rat, and in turn is eaten by the snake. And also, we could create also that the snake could also be eaten by the owl, which makes the owl as the top predator or the apex predator. And as you all know, lahat ng to, babalik, and will be consumed by the decomposers. So that's it for today's video. I hope you have learned and have fun. Please feel free to comment, hit like, and ring the bell for you to be updated on our next upcoming videos. So at Ainsinatics out.